Probably the best way to sum up Ted Wasana's song is that he's Khan's version of the American dream. Dinner was splendid. I suppose it would be appropriate for us to reciprocate. We're having a party this weekend. We'd love it if you could make it. Oh, we'll be there. And then maybe this summer we come visit at your beach house on the golf. Uh, of course. Well, let's set a date. I get calendar. Please, do not make this awkward. Hey folks, welcome to Squirrel Tactics. Like, subscribe, check out the Patreon, let's do this. Ted was son of song. We don't know for sure if his name is actually Ted or not, but that's what we're gonna go with. Husband of Cindy and father of Chain, voiced by Toby Huss. Archie, the strongest man in the world. Yeah, I'm never gonna not use that. Who also voiced Khan, Cotton, and Coach Kleehammer, among others. He's Laotian American like Khan, but unlike Khan, he's a successful businessman as well as a prominent member of both Arlen Society and the All Asian Nine Rivers Country Club. Nine Rivers Country Club, now accepting applications from most of Arlen. We also see him as a member of the Arlen Booster Club. A thought, just supposing we fire this Smitty, what would happen to his pension buddy? Could it be diverted into, say, a new Nautilus machine? And if not, why not? Whenever we see meetings of Arlen's businessmen, he's typically in the room as well as Lane Prattley, and though he and Khan have similar beginnings, Ted very much looks down on Khan, going so far as to forbid his son from dating Khan Jr. How hard would it have been to say we had to pick up Uncle Vaughn at the airport? Not very. Well, we've been forbidding Chain to date Connie. Let's have dinner and remind ourselves why. Greetings, Ted and Cindy was on a song. It's been too long. We just had you over a few, well, yeah, we meant to. And we get this nice little tidbit to prove his sense of superiority. Say, the alarm in my Mercedes is on the fritz. Am I going to be okay on the street? Or should you move your car and let me park in the garage? Rest easy. The only crime here is how much taxes are going up due to skyrocketing property values. <laughs> His first appearance was in Naked Ambition, where we see him, but he never speaks. His first speaking role was in Won't You Pee My My Neighbor. His first speaking role was in Won't You Pee My Neighbor. His first speaking role was in Won't You Pee My... His first speaking role was in Won't You Pee My My... His first speaking role was in Won't You Pee My Neighbor, where Buddhist monks come to Arlen looking for a reincarnated llama. Okay, son. You the llama. You the llama. Though we find out later in The Redneck on Rainy Street that Ted has switched to an Episcopal church for rather shallow reasons. Ted! I look for you at the Buddhist temple! Oh, hello, Khan. We're Episcopal now. It's just good business. Oh, there's the mayor. And this is a trend with Ted. He tends to be rather hypocritical and tends to use people for his own means. He's a fan of golf. Hitting into this kind of wind, you've got to play the ball back at your stance. Keep it low, then just watch it bite and hold. Huh, not a lot of guys know how to hit a decent knockdown shot. Just takes practice. But also uses Hank to get the PGA to come to Nine Rivers because they only have Asian members and need a white guy in a man without a country club. Damn it, Con. Do you want to join Nine Rivers? Oh, Ted, thank you, yes! Well, you can forget it unless you make Mr. Ho see that Hank would be the perfect Nine Rivers member. What? Why are you so interested in that chicken fried loser? If we don't attract at least one non-Asian member, the PGA is going to pull the tournament from Nine Rivers. You deliver me, Hike, and I'll put you up for junior membership. You will offer me full membership. Associate membership. Full membership! Done! He's also not a very good liar, and he lays it on pretty thick. Hank, how's my favorite new member? <laughs> wow! Forgive me for saying this, Peggy Hill, but you are super hot. <laughs> you are forgiven. Ho, ho, ho! There are some people from the PGA I'd like you to meet. You know, Ted, I'm a member of the PGA myself. <laughs> the, the Propane Gas Association. <laughs> uh, because I sell propane and propane accessories. <laughs> oh, Hank, you are out of control. But Hank eventually figures out that he's being used with Ted showing how little he actually cares about Hank. Hank? I will admit, I first asked you to join because you are white. Now, 
I'm asking you to stay because you are you, my friend. Can I ask you one more question? What and what accessories do I sell for a living? Tractors? And to be fair, Nine Rivers has done some pretty messed up stuff. He tends to chide Khan for his western lifestyle, particularly in Orange You Said I Did Say Banana. A word if we may. The gook had I feel that you've become grievously disconnected from your heritage. It's as though you've completely forgotten that you're Lao. What? That's not true. Take a look around, Khan. Can you point to one Lao artifact in your home? Can you recall the last conversation you had that was not in English? Where he's part of a coup to retake Laos from the communist government. Khan, right now the Lao community is not taken seriously. The Cuban exile community in Florida is taken very seriously. Do you know why? Uh, Gloria Estefan? No. They wield political influence in this country while maintaining ties to rebel groups in their mother country. And it doesn't seem that he does this because he cares, more because he can have more power that way, as well as bringing attention to Laotian immigrants, which would, I guess, give him a little bit more sway. Ted points out that Khan doesn't really know much about his culture, or even for getting a holiday. Oh, Khan, good to see you. We're on our way to distribute food to the poor. Is that euphemism for playing round of golf because I'm in? Cod, you do know that it's Baka Pusa today, don't you? And then making this mistake at a party for the Laotian holiday that he forgot. Yeah, redneck neighbors built it for me. <laughs> Maybe next I have them build me railroad. How that for revenge? Cod, the railroads were built by the Chinese, not Laotians. Our same difference. <gasps> It's just joke. Maybe too far? Ted refers to Khan as a banana. You've become what is known as a banana. Banana? Consider the properties of a banana, Khan. Its skin is yellow, but its insides are white. And when he's called out for living just as Western a lifestyle as Khan, if not more so Western, Ted defends with this. I cannot help but notice your state-of-the-art home theater system and your four-car garage. Sure, I own all these things, but they don't own me. Ah. I'll try to explain. This is man of Luang Nam Tha, carved by a native Highlander more than 300 years ago. It's the embodiment of the Lao spirit. This is my link. As long as I carry this, everything else is meaningless. So I just keep one of those in my pocket and I can have a big screen TV. You got an extra one of those guys lying around? Unfortunately, you're not ready yet. It wouldn't mean to you what it means to me. And Ted is able to recruit Khan to be a foot soldier in their fight against the Laotian government. We want you to join the armed resistance and fight for us on the front lines. Front lines? Oh yes, Khan, there may be risks, but I wonder, is life as a banana better than death? Or is it worse? Will you join us, Khan? Of course he will join us. He is a proud Lao man, willing to shed his blood for our mother country. <laughs> Problem is, uh, Ted kind of goes a little far with his power trip. McGook! I can't have this. I talked Councilman Ebert into making the first Tuesday in May Lao Freedom Day. We are parading from the nail salon to the Boba tea shop, and we are going to look smart doing it. But luckily, we do finally see Khan stand up for himself. Hey, Ted. I want to thank you for making me remember who I am and where I come from. But I won't be needing these anymore. I don't understand. How do you plan to parade without your uniform? Oh, my parading days are done. It's like this. If you want someone to play a round of golf, give me a call. If you want someone to feel guilty about the way they choose to live, call someone else. Domingo! 
Now, Ted is willing to do nice things for others, but only if it could benefit himself, such as when he and Con bought a mini fridge full of drinks for Bobby so that he could help the Quiz Bowl team that their children were on in Stress for Success. Bobby Hill, come on down! How much you pay for fabulous mini fridge stocked with Red Bull and Mountain Dew? Nothing! Free for you! But why? Because you're the key to getting Shane into the school of his choice, Stanford. Connie choose Harvard, and you paved the way. With new fridge, you never have to leave your room. Everything on your shoulders! Or when he goes the extra mile to get Alamo beer for Hank to help convince him to join Nine Rivers in a man without a country club. I'll make sure we stock Alamo here from now on, Hank. That's the level of service Nine Rivers offers its members. I guess that's my clumsy way of saying... I hope you'll be one. He was one of the first people to get on board with the Arlen Museum of Prostitution in Harlot Town. Even going so far as to play the sheriff at the Harlot Town Days Festival. In The Men Who Knew Too Much, he and his wife used men's skeet shooting ability for their own gain. Yeah, they think the other club is full of snobs. They also use Peggy to get them out of selling for Cozy Kitchen and MLM, and Peggy goes to Potts. I had to get out of my contract, and the only way was to find a replacement. We did what we had to do. We tried to disappear from the face of the earth by holding up at our beach house. It's on that island. They still found us. They have motorboats, Peggy. Motorboats? And it's here that we see Ted's enjoyment of model trains. It's done. We're free. Super. We see in Pour Some Sugar on Con that he also enjoys karaoke. And he convinces Khan to give it a shot. He's one of the main forces pushing for a ban on trans fats and trans fascism. That is why I am bringing a bill to the city council to ban the sale of food cooked in trans fat. But of course, Ted being Ted, he also ate at the illegal trans fat serving food trucks. Ted? But the food bans were your idea. A contradiction on the surface, but unlike many, I have the discipline to enjoy these indulgences. That's right, Hank Hill. Ted Bishana's home better than you. Perhaps it is education, perhaps breeding. The debate rages on. He even has a super catchphrase. Super. Super. Just super. He's super white. Super. And in Square Footed Monster, we see him buying up a house on Rainy Street. Indeed, God, I did acquire this property, and today I'm breaking ground on what some people refer to as a dream home. Only to tear it down in order to build a McMansion. Parted by dust. <laughs> Here, I got you all something I thought you'd like. Peach Chardonnay? You're welcome. Care to see what all the fuss is about? Oh my God! It's a McMansion! And of course, it's not for himself, but rather a spec house. This is your dream home? No, not for me. I am creating someone else's dream. It's what's called a speculation house. Huh? And it eventually gets destroyed for being unsafe and shoddily built. This was no act of God. Look at those sledgehammer marks. It was the act of rednecks on a drunken rampage. 
We don't have anything to hide. The only one who did something wrong here was you. Your shoddy McMansion was going to destroy our homes. We only took it down in self-defense. And for the record, nobody was drunk. There's a chance I may not have been within the legal limits. Only to be replaced with a power substation. Are you aware of the term eminent domain? Yeah, that's where the government buys your property for public use, but really they're doing it for kickbacks from companies who sign lucrative development contracts. Correct. You see, I found out two can play the Edgar Hornsby game. He dug up an ancient eminent domain statute that allowed me to sell the lot to the city. Gentlemen, enjoy your new power substation. So overall, Ted is a well-to-do businessman who has no issue using others for personal gain and has a penchant for preaching one thing and doing another. He tends to treat people as being beneath them and isn't exactly the kind of person you'd want to have to deal with very often. Plus, his version of hot danger is just, yeah, it's just terrible.